this Advent, we are focusing on a series titled Windows on Christmas. When you look out of a window, you see a certain point of view, a certain perspective that you can only see from that window. And when you move on to the next window, no matter how close it might be, you get a different view, you get a different perspective. And I think the point of the series is to do just that, to look at similar events, stories that we've heard so many times, and maybe even every Christmas, and to see them from a different perspective, to see them from a different point of view. And today's message begins with seeing uh, the story of Mary meeting the angel through the angel's perspective. So if you could picture with me for a minute um, a vision of God in his throne room uh, surrounded by the heavenly court, uh, cherubim and seraphim and angels all around, and he summons Gabriel and he gives him a message and he gives him a mission and Gabriel leaves these courts to go seek out this one girl, this one young girl, and he meets her to share the good news, a message of hope, a message of exaltation. Uh, we're gonna turn into our Bibles in the book of Luke 1, 26 uh, through 38, and we're gonna read this perspective. And as we listen to it, as I read it, uh, try to keep in mind the angel's perspective as you hear it. Luke 1, 26, it says this. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. So we see in this um, passage here a story of an encounter with a human from the angel's perspective. And it wasn't the first encounter of Gabriel's kind like this. Um, I'm sure that there were other people that he went and spoke to, but there had been a lot of silence from God, as it seemed, on the behalf of Israel people. Um, so it might have been a while since Gabriel had had the chance to go to speak to someone. It's not a common thing, um, angelic encounters. And before he went to speak with Mary, he was sent to Elizabeth to go speak and give her very similar news. Um, actually, Zechariah, to give Zechariah similar news. And um, so he goes from meeting with Zechariah and Elizabeth six months prior to this, and I'm assuming goes back to heaven and is with God, and then comes back to meet with Mary and give her this message. So as I look at this portion of scripture, some things stand out to me. Um, one is that Gabriel did what was asked of him. He fulfilled the mission that he was sent to do. And he brings a message of hope and comfort. And this message is not just for Mary, but it's for all of Israel. And honestly, it's for all of the world. And although we're focusing on Gabriel and the angels in this passage, they themselves are a lesser, a lesser version of, of someone greater. Angels come and they serve, they deliver, they proclaim good news, give messages of hope and exaltation, and they worship God. But they're not to be worshipped. They are not worthy of worship. They're creations. 
just as we are. And what I believe that they point to is twofold, especially in this passage, but in general. They point to the calling of every believer and the life of Christ. Angels do exactly what every believer should do. They bring glory to God and they worship him. These two things together make up uh, the exaltation of God. And you only exalt someone who you determine is worthy of it. When I think of my father, uh, I smile and, and it's easy for me to tell you all about the wonderful things um, that he's done for me, the personality he had, the smile he had, um, and the way he would make me laugh, the way he made me feel loved. And even though you don't know him, uh, if I told you enough about him, you would start to think highly of him. You would start to know him by acquaintance because I'm lifting him up, because I'm exalting him. And in the same way, if I have a favorite show or a favorite food, the more I tell you about how much I love it, the more I tell you about how wonderful it is, the more likely you are to try it, the more likely you are to think highly of it, because I'm exalting it. And it's easy for me to exalt something or someone who gives me real joy. It makes me feel good to be around this person or to eat that food or to watch that show or to read that book. And so I have no problem sharing it with you. Truly believing that you can experience the same joy that I have by being in relationship with this person or by trying that thing. And so it should be easy for every believer, right? To do this, to be so joyous and proud of our relationship with God that we wanna share this news with whoever will listen because we want them to feel as good as we do. And this is what the angels are so good at. They sing praises to God with their every word, with their every act of obedience, and it's easy for them. It's their identity. But we're not angels. And how can we sing the same songs of praise in the seasons where we're not feeling joyous? There are phases of life where we can find it hard to celebrate and where joy seems to be far off. How do, does one practice exaltation during those times? How do you go about sharing the good news then? How do you go about rejoicing and proclaiming like the angels during those times? And to answer that, I think we have to look at Jesus. Jesus is similar to the angels. He serves, proclaims, gives messages of hope and exaltation, and he worships God. But Jesus doesn't do this from a heavenly seat, apart from the world and apart from suffering like the angels do. Instead, he demonstrates to us how to bring God glory every day. And he shows us how to do this by living in a place where suffering and heartbreak, anxiety and depression and pain are not only present, but persistent. Jesus was weeping at the tomb of Lazarus, heartbroken over the pain and death that existed in the world and, and the loss of his friend. And even in this time, he brings glory to God. He puts his own life at risk before it's his time and goes to the tomb to call Lazarus out of the grave and to proclaim that he is the resurrection and the life. Again and again in this story of Lazarus, which is found in John 11, if you want to look it up and read more, we see Jesus speaking about bringing glory to God. Jesus shows us how to exalt God and worship him even when we've experienced deep loss, even when our circumstances are not giving us feelings of joy. So like the angels and like Jesus we can, too, be faithful in our words and our actions. We can bring glory to God and live a life that's filled with exaltation. Not because our lives are free from suffering. Not because we have everything we want or even everything we need. Not because our every moment makes us feel like rejoicing. No, we can be filled with exaltation, with real joy and worship, even while carrying hard and heavy things. We are complex. 
and we are fully capable of carrying and experiencing multiple feelings at once. And we can even carry feelings at the same time that would seem to be at odds with one another. Grief and loss at the same time as celebration and joy and maybe even gratitude. I can enjoy a movie that makes me cry. I can celebrate the birth of a child while mourning a grandparent that they'll never meet. I can proclaim the goodness of God even while mourning the suffering found in this life. So how do we do it? How do we exalt God and lift him up like the angels do every moment? And I think, I think honestly, it takes a turning of one's mind. It takes the practice of gratitude. And it sounds like it's easier said than done, and that's because it is. When you're in the midst of going through a rough patch or a tough season or incredible suffering or turmoil, it's hard to count your blessings. It's hard to look up from that. But what you can do is focus on the truth about who God is. And as we proclaim what is true about God, we're led into worship. We come to find God and he meets us there. We continue to see the light even when it's dark. And it's not because we're an eternal optimist or because we live with rose-colored glasses on, but because God is walking with us. Right now, we have Emmanuel, God with us. And though life can be difficult, that good God walks with us and he is worthy of worship. So this season, you can exalt Christ even if you don't feel like celebrating Christmas. You can experience the joy and hope of Advent even if you're carrying grief and loss. You can find peace even as the season gets busier and busier. And you can bring glory to God and sing his praise with your every breath just like, just like the angels did. Just like the angels do. So remember as you see angels on your Christmas tree or see a child making an angel in the snow, remember their continual chorus of praise and take the moment to join in. Take the time to sing the praises of God, to focus on what is true and praiseworthy about our God. And as you do, you will experience an entirely different sort of joy joy that you didn't think you could experience while going through hard things. And as you do, you will join the exultant chorus of all creation and you will also bring glory to God.